Shalom. Welcome to Hebraic Awakening. And we're going to get into some fun facts about Hanukkah. This is part one. And we're going to talk about Nehemiah. All right. So when we look at Nehemiah chapter one, and we're going to, you know, look at this a little slow. The words of Nehemiah. So we know that Nehemiah name means Yahweh or Yahuwah comforts. So we see right off the back that this book is about Yahuwah bringing comfort to his people. And we see that Nehemiah is, you know, from the tribe of Yehuda. And it came to pass in the month of Kislev, the ninth month. So for me, I'm going to stop. I'm going to take a look at our Hebrew alphabet and look at the meaning of nine. So when we look at the meaning of nine, we see that it's connected to the letter Tet, and it has a picture of a basket. And this basket means to surround, to contain, to store. All right. And when you're looking inside the basket, you don't know if you're going to get something good or something bad. All right. So let's put a pin in that. So this month, it contains something. We don't know if it's good or bad. It could be both. All right. And this is just how I do when I'm trying to dissect the meaning um, from the most high, what he wants me to get from this, you know, in the 21st century in 2022. What do he want me to get from this? So I need to pay attention to this month. So we see that this month, OK, contains something and we need to look inside of this month and see what it is, because this book is surrounded. It's, it starts with the ninth month in the 20th year. All right. So I'm going to stop again and I'm going to look at the Hebrew letter and number, which is, you know, 20. And I want to see what it says. So we're going to look at the Hebrew letter cough and we see that it's the picture of the palm of the hand. And inside of the palm of the hand is potential. There are several Hebrew words that are tied, you know, to this letter. But I want to focus on that, the potential, the spiritual focus of this uh, particular story. So it is as if um, Nehemiah had a paradigm shift. And now his focus in the Most High has supernaturally focused him on rebuilding the temple because when you look at the end of the chapter chapter he said that he was a cup bearer so you know I immediately started thinking okay Nehemiah in the story you asked a question you said what happened to the exiles that survived the captivity and that have went back to the province over in Jerusalem so while your brothers and sisters who survived went back, you stay at your little cushiony job, which is a cupbearer. Didn't even think to go back with, you know, the people or your people who escaped, who went back. You didn't even think to go back. So you see how the Most High had to come in and do a spiritual focus and shift Nehemiah's thinking in the ninth month in the 20th year so this is how i begin to dissect things because i want to know how does this relate to me in the 21st century in the year 2023 and so now i must shift my focus i must look at any areas in my life where walls or gates are broken and, and burnt because of my own doing or because of the enemy. And I need to ask the most high to show me that so that he can refocus me. That that paradigm shift can come in that area. And I can Hanukkah. And the root word of Hanukkah is Hanuk. To train. So I can train my mind to rebuild those walls and the gates in my mind. So that my behavior and my attitude can change to those things that the Most High has given me spiritual focus on. Like he's given it to me, a supernatural spiritual focus to be able to see those areas. 
Because Nehemiah obviously couldn't see. Right? He couldn't spiritually discern that until he asked the question, until the Most High placed a uh, paradigm shift in his mind to be able to pivot and to spiritually focus on that particular area, which is helping to rebuild the walls, helping to rededicate the temple. So, you know, when you are looking at cultural practices, try to find it in the Tanuk. Don't listen to people who try to talk you out of something that you haven't studied for yourself because most of us are just following the crowd. You know, we keep saying, well, we don't know about, you know, this cultural holiday. Well, it's time to study. It's time to shift, right? And you don't have to celebrate this, but this is not the first time uh, that we see a dedication. This is all throughout our culture dedicating and rededicating something so the maccabees is not the first time that we see hanukkah it's not but we need to understand our hebrew language we need to understand the hebrew alphabet so that we can effectively dissect scripture all right dissect culture the language helps us to understand what was on the mind of our ancestors during that time and I'm sure that when we come out of, quote unquote, spiritual Babylon, that we are going to have a rededication. We are going to have a cultural celebration. I know that we are. So why are we turning up our nose at Hanukkah? I just I just don't understand some things. You know, if you choose not to celebrate it, that's fine. But, you know, to walk in ignorance because you don't take the time to study. Or you just listen to your favorite teacher who's against it. And so because they are against it, you are. That's that's not right. You know, not to me. So this is fun facts. Uh, a prophetic, you know, paradigm shift, if you will, in your thinking. And to those who celebrate. Chag, Samach, Hanukkah. All right. May your feast be a delight. All right, until the next video, shalom, everyone.